Hi. Hey guys. Thanks for coming out. What's great is seeing all these empty seats over here because that means normally there's, this place is all packed, <laughs> but not for us. Uh, hey everyone, thanks for coming out. My name's Jonathan. I work on the Google Voice team. Uh, in addition to that, I work with a lot of the early adopters and influencers on Google+. And today we are joined by Mark Hoppus and Tom DeLong of Blink-182. <laughs> So the guys have been uh, kind enough to take some time off the Honda Civic Tour to sit with us and answer some questions. Uh, today's discussion will be mostly around Google, uh, Google Plus and the band's involvement, as well as some questions from our fans via the YouTube moderator page. So uh, let's dive in. Uh, doing, how are you guys doing? Doing well, doing well. Um, yeah, I think that we stopped the rain today. <laughs> Pretty sure we stopped the rain. Uh, we're at the end of a 10-week tour, so every time I see people that I know, they come up to me and they say, you look really tired. <laughs> you look really tired. Um, Tom just looks that way always, so. <laughs> we're good, though. Good. Uh, Tom, this one's for you. Uh, I'm sure you're asked this all the time, but obviously we might have some newbies in the room. Uh, if you could take us a little bit through the formation of Blink-182 and a brief history up until now with the release of your new album, Neighborhoods. 20 years. It's a 20 year <laughs> speech. Uh, Give us the cliff notes. Um, I got kicked out of high school and I met his sister at the new high school. And his sister, uh, she goes, Oh, you play guitar. My brother's moving down here, plays bass. And um, I was like, Yeah, you know. And at the time, as, actually, that's when I saw Scott play because Scott was playing drums. He, he wasn't even in high school yet, but he came over at lunchtime for a battle of the bands uh, with some other freshmen or something. He was like in eighth grade. And so he's at the school, and we're like, wow, this guy's a great drummer, and he's, like in, he's in junior high. Um, so I started playing with him in his bedroom. Then I met Mark through his sister at that same school, and we started a band and um, uh, came up with the name Skateboarding one night, and, uh, and here we are. But, but so now, years later, we, Travis was opening up in another band, and, uh, and we were at odds with the first drummer, and we made a big departure and got the new guy in, and then the next thing you know, uh, we're here. It's crazy. Somewhere in there, they invented the internet, too. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we're here. That's why you remember we're the here. first time I asked you about the internet? I'm in Mark's bedroom, and I'm like, well, well, what the fuck is the internet? And he just goes, well, no, this is the raddest thing about it. It's so new, really, at this time. He goes, no, it's like, you can like, grab anything, and like, there's like a thing that you type in, and it pulls up information about that thing. He's like, for example, and you grab duct tape. Oh, yeah. And you're all, like, duct tape. And he goes to the back of duct tape. It's all duct tape.com. I was like... Why would people go look up info on tape? You know, that's what I was, but I was tripping. That was my first experience. The so, first, I was, last thing I did, and the other thing is then I went out and bought a computer to look up UFOs because I thought that would be cool. And I was like, that makes sense to me, but nice. I ended up on the uh, World Health Organization Diarrhea homepage. It was my first, <laughs> that was my first website that I visited. He was it always was the same thing. It was like my porn. sister was telling me about it. <laughs> and she was like, you can look up anything. And I'm like, all right, look up diarrhea. And, <laughs> World Health Organization diarrhea homepage. Not beautiful naked women. There's like diarrhea. No. Nope. Well, good to know. <laughs> uh, so, Mark. What was the question? <laughs> oh, something about the band back there. Uh, we're, I'm curious. Uh, what drew you to activate on Google Plus? Uh, you're obviously one of more more active users, and mm -hmm. I'm curious what your favorite features are. Uh, I love that from its integration, from its inception, that you could segment who you spoke to and gave which information to, which is, I think, for me personally, uh, and I think for everybody in the world, is you want to share stuff with certain people. I like that ability. I didn't like having a public persona and a private persona and having two different web pages and things like that. And Google Plus had that from the beginning, which really drew me to it. Um, it's new. I feel like uh, the level of discourse on Google Plus is really high right now. Obviously, it's new, so the people that are, are coming to it are interested. Um, everything works really well together. I like the Hangouts. Uh, I can't wait until the, um, I'm able to hang out with more than 10 people, because it's really weird right now when I do a Hangout. <laughs> <laughs> so, it is, because like, I'll go into a Hangout, and 10 people, or nine other people will pop up, and everyone's just sitting there staring. <laughs> <laughs> is this really him? And it, it's, I've done this dozens of times, and, it's like, and I go, so where are you guys all from? And then it's cool because everyone's like, you know, I'm from Turkey, I'm from, uh, you know, South America, I'm from Australia. And then uh, and nobody says anything. <laughs> and so it's about like 10 minutes of me just going like, any questions? 
But it's cool. I like having that kind of access to people. I like um, being able to post some things to just my friends. Um, I like judging my friends and putting them in certain circles accordingly. <laughs> I'm like the ruler of a small kingdom. I'm, I'm a benevolent king, but I, I'm, I'm fair, but I, yeah. <laughs> I'm also strict. <laughs> Good to know you know how to use it. Yeah. You got it going. Uh, Tom, we're honestly thrilled to have you on Google Plus and uh, really we're, <laughs> well I know I am <laughs> and uh, I'm just curious what your first impressions are but more specifically you know how you've involved social media as a big way of engaging your fans over the years well I <clears throat> I was always enamored with Google I think that like when you look at all the big tech giants of what's going on I mean you know, everyone references Apple for the hardware, and then, uh, you know, everyone references uh, Google. He's like, you guys own the internet. You know, it's all this information. And I always was so excited to see uh, competitively what you guys were going to do with your company and all the incredible wizardry that you have, you know. And so when this came out, I was instantly drawn to it because I thought that, that you guys would use the technology to really integrate so well into things it's not all there yet, but I can imagine what will happen when you start bringing in like Google Maps more and all the streaming capabilities and email capabilities and all that kind of stuff. It seemed like the one missing component to such a large world that you guys already had. So I was instantly just like, okay, this is going to be a really interesting and different kind of take on the social experience. Um, for me, it's always been really important as the internet, I always described it as like the central nervous system that connects all these different countries and people of, of varying ethnicities and, and um, locations across the globe, but it's like instantaneous. This generation of people is so massively different than when we were a kid. So I think for a company that's so heavily entrenched in the internet, that's responsible for so much of where it's going and what it's capable of, the idea of having a social network um, be able to be the glue that ties all your other pieces together, I thought that would be a great thing for um, for a business and for a band. And, and um, that's how I look. I'm not much I do really stupid things when I just go out there to say something just to say it. Like, I'm not good at that kind of stuff because usually it's really bad. And I, I understand that I'm trying to get better at that, but it has not gotten any better <laughs> for years. But, um, but to be an independent artist and to be able to have that kind of reach and connectivity with your fans and, and to understand where the marketplace is going and what, how I want to basically create art that, that, can, go, um, that can be a little bit more um, forward thinking, you need to have those types of tools. And like Mark said, being able to, to aggregate people but also send them certain pieces of, of information based on who they are or what their likes are, I mean, that's like the whole, that's like a vague way describing what everyone's going after, you know, and, uh, and I think that you guys can do anything you want. It's a blank canvas, and that's what's exciting to me. Cool. Uh, that's the short answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark, a personal favorite Google Plus post of mine is actually when you chose to reveal the track listing for your new album via mm -hmm. a screenshot of just your iTunes library. Oh, right. And I I'm just curious, was this planned? Was this spur of the moment? And can we expect this to be like, you know, per se, the new press release artists doing it themselves? I didn't mean for it to be the release of the uh, album track listing. I didn't even think about it. Uh, I probably pissed a bunch of people off when I did that. I was so excited to have the actual album in my iTunes library as an album rather than just a bunch of files that I'd taken home from the studio. It was an actual thing at that point that I took a screenshot of it to, just because I was excited as a fan of our band. I wanted to put it up there. But I think that I think that it is kind of the new press release. I think that people do more of their own press now. Um, traditional media is also completely important as well. But I, for me, I love that I can go on Google Plus and let you know, a bunch of people know something or tweet something to two million people and it's there. It's immediate. It allows us to be very agile with, uh, I mean, from afar it would look like we have, we're smart marketing, but really I'm just excited and I like to do stuff. <laughs> That's, it's the same You're as anxious. That. I'm anxious and I'm excited <laughs> and I like that instant feedback. I mm. like having a thought and having it go out to a bunch of people even if it is dumb. <laughs> well, I'm sure your fans appreciate it, right? Some people do. <laughs> I, I never understand though. I never get like, especially on, on across all of this stuff. Like you post something and people reply back, "Oh, that's dumb," or "You're an idiot," and you're like, "You follow, You had to click a button to follow me. <laughs> you had to read my thing, and then you had to click a bunch more buttons to tell me that you didn't like what I said. Just unfollow. Haters gonna hate, man. Uncircle. I don't get it. <laughs> uh, so Tom, there's been some chatter about musician roundtables using Hangouts on Google Plus, and I'm curious. Uh, Hangouts max out at 10 people, 
But in your dream scenario, if you could hang out with anyone using Google+, Plus, alive or dead, who would, who would you guys like to have, each of you? Um, <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I <laughs> there's a lot. I think a lot. I, I it, to me, any kind of interesting discussion. It doesn't really necessarily matter who it is. I mean, it's it would be interesting to to be with you know musicians, uh, legendary ones from the '60s, because because to me it's come full circle where bands came out selling very few records and had to work really hard to to make some noise. And some, to get some attention. And then we ushered in the 80s and 90s where all instantly you're selling millions and you don't have to do anything and you're selling millions of records. And then now you're all the way back to where bands have to work so hard to sell a few. And I think it causes these artists to have to really think about their art and be a lot more progressive um, just to get any kind of attention. So it's actually a good and a bad thing. But it would be interesting to have discussions with artists from that time period. Because I, I think back in the 60s and 70s, you know, that's when you started getting. Um, bands like the Beatles or Led Zeppelin, and they start really start thinking bigger and different, and, and just doing things that um, set them apart from the norm. And I almost feel like we're kind of going into that same zone again. Um, so to me, that would be a really interesting discussion. But I, the idea that people can come and attend these kind of these things is is really interesting. And I th that's what's cool, so cool about the whole video streaming thing. It's just like it, that in itself is a whole institution that can go for miles and miles on its own outside of, I mean, especially integrated into a social network. It's just like, it's incredible. Mark, what about you? Oh. Um, Napoleon Bonaparte. <laughs> uh, probably my grandfather, who I never got to meet. Um, so like Einstein, uh, probably Tom. You and Travis would be in there. With Einstein? With Einstein. Just make me look stupid? That'd be great. I don't know. Just a bunch of, I, I could, I, I could, Think of a lot better list. Creative people <laughs> throughout time. Creative smart people throughout time. Socrates. Socrates. It'd be a lot like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you should think of Hangouts. Yeah, totally. Bill, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. That's good. Uh, now, curious, uh, Mark, you're actually known for responding directly to fans within the comment section of your Google Plus posts. Yeah. Why do you think this is important? Uh, I just like setting people straight and, and answering people's questions. I've always, as a fan of music growing up, I always dreamed about being able to ask questions of bands that I loved, and obviously there was never really, that, actually one time, I, I saw They Might Be Giants when I was 16 years old, and I sent them a letter. They played a song in this concert that they didn't put on any of their records, and I sent them a letter saying, hey, how come you never record that song? The sun is a massive incandescent gas. And uh, I sent it to them, and they actually emailed me, uh, not emailed me, they actually mailed me back a handwritten letter. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. And to have that kind of access, much more convenient for me. Like, I can answer people's questions all day long, and it kills time for me, and, and it lets people know what's up with the band. And I think that people know that we honestly appreciate their support of our music. And uh, I like that kind of interaction. It's important to me. We've always been like that. We've always hung out after shows and talked to people. Not you so much. Um, <laughs> hang out, you know, I hide a little bit. But I, li I like that kind of interaction. I like that. You guys should create, like, hardware that they can stick on their bodies and we can really touch them. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. That's why, <laughs> I'm being, I'm, that's why he what? doesn't post. That's true. <laughs> that's true. That is we true. need those gems. <laughs> uh, so Tom, in 2005, Blink-182 toured. 2005 is actually pretty unique because it also saw the launch of YouTube. And I'm curious, how does it, how does it feel to have a shift from video spins to YouTube views? Is it more promising in a way that fans can access your videos on demand instead of you know watching TV at the right time and hoping to catch maybe oh, yeah. a snip. It, it's a total game changer. And the coolest game thing- Game changer! Oh, buzzword. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tell them to think outside the box. <laughs> Synergy. <laughs> Isn't that a, um, uh, anyways, get back to the, the I, what is cool is like now it's like, hey, have you heard of this band or have you heard of this song or have you heard of anything? YouTube is like the new, uh, it's almost like a mini different version of an encyclopedia. You know, you can instantly go there and get some information on it. You can either hear the song or you can see the video or you can see an interview or you can see a TV performance or you can see some kid, his review about a book or a movie or whatever. It's like, it's, you know, you can go to, you can go to um, places like Wikipedia or whatever, but YouTube is like this more from the common person, like uh, really putting their thoughts up, whether it's like they record. A lot of times it's a, a kid. I I've had kids stand outside the studio and record stuff from their car and go put it on YouTube. And it's just like this echo, you know, like, I don't know. I think it's totally a, a changing. Uh, you can say it. I, I, say it. I don't know if I'm scared <laughs> to say it, but it is. It totally changes the game for everyone. 
<laughs> I just like it for, you know, the uh, honey badger. <laughs> <laughs> Which you hadn't even seen that. I didn't even, even know about that. honey badger until two days ago. It's honey badger. Honey badger? I'll show you. Have you guys seen... <laughs> All right. Never mind. <laughs> You'll see it. I mean, you just all the weird all shit the stuff on YouTube is what I've noticed. Double Rainbow, all like all the classics. <laughs> peanut Butter Man. Dude. <laughs> peanut just, Butter Man. Exactly. I haven't even seen that one. That's a, just it's Peanut Butter Man. It's just that. Butter. You guys search that on your own network. <laughs> at your own. What are yeah, you guys putting up there? So uh, this is for both of you. I, I, I'm assuming you both use smartphones, and I'm, I'm curious. Besides the Google Plus app. Uh, what are your favorite apps? I'm, oh, I'm curious. Show them yours. <laughs> I'm just curious what would make your life. <laughs> your, your mustache app. I know. I, I love the mustache app. It's funny. But... <laughs> do you not have it? Oh, I do, but it's just. Oh, okay. But <laughs> no, I just don't know if that's a. Pro well, everyone's got Apple computers. I have an iPhone. I don't know if that's weird. He has, ladies and gentlemen, he has an iPhone. Don't. I know. There's a few of us that have iPhones, yeah. Um, what are our favorite apps? My favorite apps? Is that the question? Yeah. Well, anything, you know, particular, maybe something that makes life on the road more convenient or, you know, maybe staying in touch with your family and friends right. a little bit easier. Um, well, personally, I'm not much... Chat roulette? <laughs> what did you say, chat roulette? You say, chat, roulette? chat roulette. Yeah. Um, I've heard about that. I haven't done that. I haven't either. Yeah. I'm too afraid. Yeah. I'm just too afraid. I keep thinking it's just going to be a naked man. That's it's all it is. is. Is that what it is? That's all it is. <laughs> It's like, your, it's like his dad's like waiting. <laughs> uh, but I uh, wait for my dad's IPO. <laughs> I don't know. I the apps I, I I'm I like to uh, the only apps I really use for real are like news kind of stuff and I like in art or movies and stuff. I like to I'm I'm not the onion. I like the onion a lot because it cheers me up a bit, you know. <laughs> and my by the way. I was just at the White House, and Barack Obama reads The Onion every day. It's on his, his secretary's desk right on the top. He wants to cheer up a bit, too, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> um, but the, 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 it's infinite, though. And the, you know what's really cool about Android is you guys are the new Microsoft, you know? And Microsoft's ancient. They're, it's a whole different... I, 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 what I loved about it is, like... You know, oh, you're going to get it. <laughs> oh, you're going to get I'm it. I'm just saying, I know. But, uh, but I really believe that. I believe that, you know, that whole, the idea that it's open source and, and, and having the internet connected into it is really appealing and really competitive. And, um, and all the hype that Microsoft got back in the day is now here with that. And it's, uh, and um, I, I don't know, I, I think that what's more exciting is not so much the apps that I love, it's just the fact that there are apps that people can go out and you can be anybody in a bedroom and figure it out and launch an application, a program, and it's not 50, 60 bucks like it used to be. It can be 99 cents or whatever, so. True. Mark, what about you? Oh, apps? Yeah. Um, I'm just traditionalist, you know. Words of friends kind of guy. Oh, words of friends, I do a lot of words of friends, mm -hmm. yeah. Instagram. I destroy people. Instagram I like a whole lot. I love Instagram. Hipsomatic's cool. I mean, there's all those. Um, the camera apps are awesome, yeah. All camera apps are great, all the social networking ones. Uh, mustache apps, I guess. Mustache apps. That's about it. Uh, no fart apps, nothing? No fart apps, no. Uh, those are the time I've apps. done a, quite a few fart apps. Because <laughs> you can put them on timers. Oh, that's solid. So you hide it in the other part of the room. <laughs> so uh, we're going to take some time, we're going to take some questions. Uh, we had a ton of questions submitted uh, online. So uh, we, have, we set up a YouTube moderator page, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and read some of those off for you guys. So a mighty big Dan from British Columbia asks, Tom, how long does it take for you to write your lyrics? Where does most of your inspiration come from? Um, it doesn't take me too long. Um, I, my inspiration usually comes from uh, uh, once this, the music for the song is more or less closer being completed, um, I'll just try and find an emotional current in it that makes sense. I'll either identify with it and write exactly like it or try and write the opposite. Um, it's a good question because I think it's different for every artist. You know, they always say, you know, I write the words first, and, and, um, and, but not, not for myself. I like to write the music first because that, to me, is like the foundation of the building you build on top of it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Kale Baskew, maybe I pronounced that correctly, no, in from, you're right. <laughs> from San Jose <laughs> asks, what's going on with the Blinkumentary? Super excited for when it comes out. I'm sure it will be great. Uh, we are still working on it. It's still being filmed. And I, I, I won't lie, I don't even know much of what, what this We've is. We've been, uh, a friend of ours by the name of Haven Lamro has uh, been on the road with us for two years, kind of documenting the reformation of the band, us going out on our first tour, us going into the studio, working on this record, and um, 
I think we're gonna wrap it up. I mean, we've been wrapping it up for it seems like six months now. It's hard because you keep. We've been doing a lot of important things the past couple months. <laughs> yeah. so it's kind of keep flowing. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's an ongoing thing that hopefully will get released fairly soon. Cool. Uh, so X Fob M from Belgium asks, "What's your best memory ever when you were on tour?" Well, that's hard. Um, one of the best recent ones. We we were fortunately. Uh, able to headline Reading Festival mm -hmm. Leeds, which is 100,000 people. It's the biggest festivals in the world for a rock band, and um, or probably in general. So when you get to the opportunity to headline that festival, it's like, it's a, a, it's a highlight of your career. And we did that and um, broke quite a few records that night at that festival. It's in England, and um, that was huge. Coming off that, you felt pretty good about yourself, you know. Uh, lots of people. A lot of, yeah, it's a lot of people in there. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And they're all staring at you. It's like weird, but. <laughs> So uh, Blackbird192 from Italy asks, Wishing Well, a song that may represent the story of every one of us, fans <coughs> and Blink, told in three and a half minutes, where did you find the inspiration to touch so many hearts with such an amazing song? Props. Oh. <laughs> Super props. I actually wrote the lyrics, you asked about the lyrics, I wrote the lyrics to that at my daughter's school. And there was a picnic going on, and I was not engaged because we were late on the recording. <laughs> There's all these kids running around bouncing off the walls, and I'm sitting at a little... Uh, Bench. I'm just like, what rhymes with? It? I mean, by finding rhyme apps on my phone, I'm like, what rhyme? <laughs> not necessarily. Like, I had no service. That's, that's one of your favorite apps. Right? Um, you got to come up with a better story than that. But that's <laughs> the, that's the truth. But I mean, I fortunately, I th I'm really focused when it comes to studio stuff, so it doesn't really matter where I'm at. I mean, I obsess over it to where my wife hates me because that's I just live in those songs for the in totality of the recording. So uh, whether whether I'm at tra chat roulette with naked men or I'm at a school, I'm. <laughs> dedicated to figuring it out but wishing well it's a great song it's a it's a it, in the song really it's just about um being a little bit lost trying to find your way and i and i think there's a lot of that on our record where it's you know everyone's trying to get by and everyone's trying to win in their own way but we're on it together so you did a good job thank you that song's really good uh our final one Is so it? blind brown eyes and we're gonna take some questions oh, okay. from googlers uh you blind you take some questions from lawyers googlers oh okay, got it <laughs> Google lawyers. There might be some lawyers in there. <laughs> Talk to my attorneys. So, uh, Blind Brown Eyes from Belgium asks, what's it like to be a hero for so many people? <laughs> oh, no. no pressure. Who are they uh, asking? <laughs> Not us, right? They're asking. It's, um, it's humbling. It's, uh, uh, yeah, I'd say it's humbling. It's really cool to get to do what we do. We're amazed that after 20 years that we still get to come out and play Shoreline Amphitheater. I grew up in California, and one year I lived actually in Mountain View, and I remember when they built Shoreline Amphitheater. And uh, to think that I play that place now with my job is pretty awesome. It's really a blessing, it's really fun, and uh, you're welcome for being your hero. I don't know, what do you want to say? <laughs> cool, so uh, I think uh, we're gonna take some questions from Googlers if we have some time. Uh, are we gonna do like a Mori thing and find out if somebody's a dad? Yeah, you have to do the dance though. Okay, cool. Oh, you do the dance. So if you guys, uh, I guess if we want to start uh, lining up, if anyone has questions for the guys. Please screen everybody and make sure they're all complimentary. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing we have here. Uh, so you brought up the uh, open source of Android. And so I have a question about music and open source. Do you see music moving towards open source and you know, really finding your revenue from concerts and merchandise and you know, making music free for everyone. Do you think music should move in that direction? I, I think that's a great question. I, I, it's that's a really hard question to answer. But I, I think that there's some kind of, um, I think that there's a compromise. And I think that music, uh, the the digital digital rights management should, they should go away. That that makes it kind of difficult because then the companies are kind of owning their own versions of the songs. Um, but what I do think is that there is a place. Uh, to follow that's very similar to how applications are running where you put out an application and there's a free version and then if you like it you can basically you know upsell them to something else and I think that music can work that way as well where you put out some free stuff and you can complete the record or you can have access to uh, physical con physical goods uh, as well uh, collectible items and um, an emerging of multiple institutions where I think record labels and fan clubs and and merchandising companies and things that were traditionally completely separate are all coming together so you can have um, the ability to do that. Because right now, I mean, for example, we put out our record uh, a week or so ago and there was a massive issue because one group owned the songs, 
one group owned the technology, one group owned all the physical goods, and then the band was over here, and everyone was making money except for the band and made it really hard. And then they all started yelling at each other, and the whole thing broke down, and we weren't even really personally involved in those conversations. And, I, and music was one of those industries where so many people came in over the decades and all started grabbing pieces, and, and, um, and, and it just became a really hard thing to create a business out of it later. So uh, my answer is I think it's going to be some kind of compromise, but I do think there is an element of, of it being free. And I think that um, that's one of those things where you stake your reputation on, you know, kind of, I believe that you will like what we do, so I'm willing to let some of it go out to everybody. Um, but to what degree is going to vary. Thank you. Hey, guys. Um, everyone's a collector, I think, of something in their own way, whether it's small or big. So I just want to know if you guys collect anything. Bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I collect uh, vintage guitars. Uh, Simpsons action figures um, and art. Not like a big collector or whatever, but I like I like art. Okay. I'm really bad yeah. at that stuff. Yeah. I don't. You know, it's funny. I've always, I don't like the. I'm. I like looking in the. I'm, it's really to my detriment too. I look forward so much that I don't look in the past. So I don't ever collect it. Nothing. I don't really value too many things from the past. And you know, my wife gets mad. It's like photos and like. I kind of find it sad when you look like a photo and you go, oh, my God, we were happy. We were young. <laughs> you know, remember it, you know? But um, um, and cl and clutter is weird to me. But I always envy, like, Mark, we remember you were collecting laminates for the longest time, too. Oh, yeah. I collect uh, room, hotel room keys. Hotel room have, keys. That's what it was, yeah. I have boxes of hotel room keys from uh, touring over the it's years. It's not weird. It's just... Yeah. It's, it's. I love the actual keys. I have, a, like, a... I don't know, a shoestring with actual keys on it, but now people like me stole all those keys, so they have to go to key cards, and now uh, I just have nice. rows and rows of key cards. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I could break into any hotel in the world. That's <laughs> true. Yeah, yeah. You can you can use their pool for free, right? Yeah, for yeah. sure. That's the way to do it. Yeah. So I collect T-shirts and uh, Android figures. Oh, and cool. Just awesome. wanted to see if you guys wanted to trade anything for one of these T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Mark will. Broke. He'll give you some keys. Yeah. I'll give you, uh, <laughs> oh my God. There's I, a key to my room now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I got guitar picks. I don't have them with me though. I just got soft. I'll owe you right here. Right? I'll owe you some guitar picks. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Very nice. Much appreciated. Thank you, sir. Does, I don't know. Does he open up? He's gonna break it in half. Does he open up? <laughs> oh, it looks like it's supposed to open up. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for this. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, how come you never toured in South America? We tried. We actually were going. We had a bunch of stuff booked years ago, and that is uh, the goal. It's just a matter of getting down there at the right time. Because when you release a record, uh, there's certain things in certain places you have to be at a certain time, right? So they start mapping out the whole world, and um, and uh, but I think it's long past due that we get down right. there. Absolutely. You guys, you guys have a huge fan base in South America. So. Yeah, we we're very lucky. We yeah, Brazil, South America in general is gigantic for us, and we've never toured there. I think when we very first started off, it was too prohibitively expensive for us to go. And then um, when we should have gone there, we were touring other places, and now uh, it's just a matter of getting us down there. Cool, thanks. Hey, guys. Hi. Two uh, quick questions. What would you guys do if you were never in the music industry and your favorite Blink-182 songs? I would still live with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, I don't know, what would you do? Um, I would still be, with my mom? I would still be living in my mom's living with her now, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> no, I, I would be driving, remember, I would still be doing, this is what we did. Mark would be, it'd be three in the afternoon, he's got a burrito and a big gulp and video games, and I would show up in a truck with concrete, and I'd say, dude, come help me deliver this shit. It's so heavy, I can't do it by myself. He'd be like, all right, and he would just jump in and we'd go and he would help me deliver concrete and he'd be like, I'm sore for like five days, I'm like, I gotta do this every day. So I don't know, it's, I, I think about that all the time. Like I was, uh, I, yeah, I, yeah, a, a couple, couple back surgeries later, you know, yeah. I'm, I was delivering giant things of concrete, Mark was playing video games at home and uh, that's about all we're good for outside of this. And favorite Blink songs? Oh man, I don't know. I really it totally changes day to day. Yeah. They all serve a different purpose. Yeah, right now I'd say um, After Midnight, because that's our new single. And uh, I love Wishing Well. That's a great song. I li yeah, I mean, I like, I really like this. We have a song called Violence, which is on our last record, which is kind of this mix of electronic and punk rock. It was a lot of fun when that song happened because it really showed, um, it showed kind of the convergence of drum and bass music and pop punk music. And I think that also 
um, was a little bit uh, of, a, of a window into where we're going with this record. So, um, but favorites, it's like, a, yeah, that doesn't really work. Thank you. Thanks. Hello. I really like your nail polish. Oh, thanks. <laughs> the sad part about this nail polish is that this happened completely sober. <laughs> I did this of my own free will. I bought it, and I thought it would be cool last night. I, I like to make poor choices when I'm sober as yeah. well. Good, okay. So, um, <laughs> uh, actually, well, I actually want to just bring the <laughs> mood, mood down a little bit and ask a serious question. Okay. Um, if, this is for both of you, if you guys were a mythical creature, <laughs> what would you be? This guy? And why? Ooh, a unicorn. <laughs> the man riding guy. the unicorn or the unicorn with describe what it is. out of its This butt. is a <laughs> Viking riding a unicorn, blasting out of its rear end a rainbow in front of the moon. He's got red high tops on. He's holding aloft an AK-47 getting struck by lightning. There's, you can't get better than that. The actual okay, cool. name Fair of this enough. shirt is Awesome 5000. <laughs> it has its own title, so yes, I would be him. Nice. That's good. I don't really have a good answer like that. <laughs> I should have let you go first. So. Uh, yeah, and you should have. If I was to be a mythical, uh, a mythical creature of any sort. What about the guy from the Old Spice ads? The, the half man, half horse? He's pretty right. Was, was that Centaur? I think so. I don't know. Does he have a huge? So. <laughs> if that's the case, well, is a whore. I don't know. Do you guys know this? Stop. Stop. You guys Save yourself. Me, I, do you want honest? I'm an artist. <laughs> you guys, let me be honest here. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't. You know what's interesting though is uh, I don't even want me to talk about. It, it doesn't matter. I don't know. Thor. There you go. <laughs> Thor. Go with that. He's so good looking. He's like Brad Pitt. He's strong. Thank you. You think he's got those lines right? Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for coming today. Um, I think a lot of us probably grew up listening to your music, and I was wondering if people have kind of grown up as you guys have grown up, or if your fan base has like remained younger and. It's been both. Over. Actually, one of the best things about coming back out on the road right now is that we are seeing people who have been following Blink since day one come out to the shows. We have seen uh, new people come out to the shows. It's like parents are bringing their kids, older <laughs> brothers are bringing their younger siblings. It's it's like a multi generational thing at the shows now. It's really cool. Um, that being said, I got a note from a mom the other day who brought her 14-year-old daughter to the show in Atlanta. Probably was not happy. And uh, was very upset with what she heard us say from the stage. And I actually wanted to email her, but I, I have no way to contact her back. But I understand where she's coming from, but why the hell would you bring your 14-year-old kid to a Blink show? Yeah, well, well, at, least, at least know what you're bringing your 14-year-old kid to. Well, that's what's weird to me, too. Where, what, how did she, she must have been the one, that, or maybe the kid just barely heard about it and said, Mom, take me. Well, apparently the kid had saved up her money by working at a job all summer to come to the show and then was really upset. But it was just the language. I'm like, look past that and look at the art. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we're doing up there. I know, yeah. But yeah, it's a multi-generational thing. We have lasers. Awesome. Yeah, we do have lasers. <laughs> and I mean, we might be talking about some really bad stuff, but there's lasers. Yeah. <laughs> just watch. Thanks, guys. I burned my eye out with a laser on the That is board. true, he did. Uh, laser hey, in hey Milwaukee. Guys. Oh, sorry. Um, Go ahead. So we, we've been talking about the internet a lot and uh, how you guys have been a band that's kind of spanned from before the internet and then after and how that's changed music. What I was wondering, has that kind of changed the way that you, I guess, go about making an album in terms of putting the focus away from making a complete album more towards like singles and like, you know, making a video straight to YouTube? Or do you think that it's changed the way that fans have kind of like looked at your albums and more taken single songs and... Does that change the way you guys do things at all? Or? It doesn't change the way that we do anything at all. I, I recognize the fact that there are some people who listen to a full album still. And when we sequence our album, uh, we think a lot about like a song flowing into the next song and how like the different keys of songs and different tempos and different feelings of songs. So you can sit down and listen to a record as a whole. I also appreciate that people want to pick and choose different songs. It's just it's the same as making a mixtape back in the day. Uh, I think it puts a lot more onus on the band to create 10 or 12 great songs. I think that um, the days of getting by with having like three or four good songs on a record and the rest of it be filler is long gone. Because then people will just buy Yeah, the people three. will just yeah. not buy the filler. Gotcha. I think their consum I think fans' consumption is like what you said, though, you know, where, I mean, one way it's changed for us, we had two studios operating, so we're using the internet to pass around ideas and we're using the internet to communicate with each other to have two studios operating at the same time. And I also think that, like what we were talking about in some of the other questions, we're in the sense where fans can consume and get int introduced to the art uh, in so many different ways. Um, and, so, and, and at the end of the day, you know, like Mark said, we want to do albums, <clears throat> but 
we'll still be excited if if anybody just wants to take a chance with one thing they really like, you know. All right, thanks, guys. Hello. Hi, guys. Oh, this is really high. <laughs> um, Tom, I have a question specifically for you. My friend Andrew Lee from Northwestern University is obsessed with you, <laughs> and he wants to know. <laughs> Um, he wants to know what's your experience doing Angels and Airwaves and how it has been different from Blink. Well, in Angels and Airwaves, we have, um, I'm able to, to not, we're not, we're so small that there's not really, there's nothing that we're going to do that might impact old or, or necessarily new fans. We don't really know um, what we're doing. You know, so what there, I guess with Blink, what's always, we're always conscious. What, what I did learn was by both, <clears throat> what I really like about it is I always tell people I get to play on one part I get to get to do things that are extremely unorthodox and and pretend that I am cerebral you know and the other way I get to I get to be the kid that I always wanted to be and always to main, maintain being eternal youth you know the spirit of having that angst so having them both be around at the same time I got to, I try to bleed some of those things over on both sides where I kind of go wow you know really I really was able to learn how not to forget who I was, and also to remember about kind of who I want to be. But I'm also into that kind of stuff. Some guy was asking me earlier about what we collect. I like I read a lot of books. You know, that's probably the only thing that I collect is books where I try to do spend a lot of time becoming a better person. You know, and my but that's really bad because I got bad judgment. So don't you know think that that's really happening. But uh, but I try to have that come into the art. You know, I really try to have that lyrically. Um, I was in a different place on the Blink record. Um, like approaching lyrics with Blink now, it's like I, I really was able to find out a little bit more of who I am. And, and like that song, Wishing Well, it's got a little bit of spirit of me trying to be a little bit of a philosopher in some ways, you know, but um, I don't know. But that's a good question. Hi, guys. Thanks Hello. for coming. My name's Kristen, and um, my heart is pounding. My heart is pounding like crazy right We're now. handsome, we know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I have to admit, I came up here without a question in mind, and I have one now, but my high school self would have killed me if I didn't at least say hi to you. Hello. So, hi. Um, <laughs> my question is, my favorite album to listen to in high school was the live album, because it was so funny. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite album to record? Oh, you know, I, well, I don't know, it's probably, they're all rad. I remember the first time with Jerry Finn on and on the state was such an incredible experience. Everything sounded so good. Yeah. And everything, that was like the first time I really felt like we were attacking it in a really professional manner. But then the how, the self-titled one where we hold up in a house for nine months was incredible too, because that was the first time we ever like had a laboratory to experiment in. Yeah. You know? I think that, um, I think the Enema of the State was our first introduction into proper recording. Um, we still had a lot of fun. Our producer, Jerry Finn, is one of the funniest guys that I've ever met in my life. Um, that's where we first watched The Family Guy. Um, was on that record? Was it, or was, maybe it was the next one. Uh, he brought some good things. Yeah, he brought some good things into the world. And then I feel like on the last record, it was really about us experimenting and trying different ideas and feeling free to push ourselves. And this record was more like relaxed yeah, than really anything. Relaxed. And uh, probably because we took two years to do it. <laughs> um, so they're all great experiences in their own way. I think that we all learned something at each recording. That's actually a really good point. Like this record, what everyone wants to think that it might have been really hard and hold up. So I mean, we really had a great time on this. So there was really, it really was relaxed. It took a while, but there was no pressure. We just did our thing and really had fun doing it. Versus previous records, is always like you always feel like it's your last record. You know, yeah. like you go into the studio, you go, oh my god, we hope the label likes this one. Or, no, we didn't have any of that on that. So th this latest record, without the pressure, was made it so much easier than so many of the other ones. But we've, the other ones were big benchmarks, you know, in our career, like, um, for all those reasons we're saying. He just made the mark like, you're dead. He's like, he, was like, he pointed at you and he goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that's, uh, that's all the time we have. Uh, obviously, thank you so much, Tom and Mark, for coming and visiting and talking with us. By the uh, way, you're, I want to give you credit. You were my kind of introduction into the whole Google world. Right as I signed up, I had a question about doing a Hangout or something, and Jonathan, you popped in and, uh, and answered it right away. And I think that's really cool. I mean, I, I've never had that on any, any other service where uh, I join up and there's somebody there like actually taking part and kind of guiding people. So thank you for that and thank you for bringing us here today. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for everyone coming out. Thanks, guys. Can we walk away now? Thank you.